Fall armyworm is an important global pest that has moved out of the Americas in the last two years and is now infesting tens of millions of hectares of crops, mostly maize, around the world. And our work has been focused on Sub-Saharan Africa because it's only recently moved past Sub-Saharan Africa into India and Yemen in the last few months. FAO has responded over the last two years, developed, working very closely with many member states and other uh, stakeholders to develop a series of tools and recommendations on how to respond to fall armyworm. And many of them are here in the guidance notes, which you can pick up or go online to the FAO fall armyworm website, which has all the guidance materials we produced, as well as much more detail about the topic of today, which is famous, the fall armyworm monitor early warning system. But just to let you know that FAO, we developed guides on farmer field schools, on pesticide guidance, etc., much beyond this particular application. So the fall armyworm in sub-Saharan Africa, where we'll concentrate our talk today, uh, has infested, as I mentioned, tens of millions of hectares of smallholder uh, crops. In sub-Saharan Africa, there are about 37 million hectares of maize planted every year, and the overwhelming majority of those farmers are smallholders. Some 98% of the maize farmers in sub-Saharan Africa are smallholders. So it's really important that we provide tools and advice that they can use in their management of fall armyworm. Um, fall armyworm has the capacity to reduce yields significantly if not well managed by those farmers or if not under natural biological control, which we won't have a lot of time to go into detail about, but there's a little uh, video there you can watch about biological control of fall armyworm and to know that there's much more information about that available about the naturally occurring biological control of fall armyworm in the fields. But as I mentioned, it quickly moved uh, out of the Americas. It's native to tropical, subtropical Americas from Argentina up to the United States. Uh, but it arrived in Western Central Africa in early 2016, where it was first detected there, and quickly spread because of its ability of the moth, the adult, to fly 100 kilometers a night, lay her eggs in new maize fields, and quickly spread across Sub-Saharan Africa where it has now infested those tens of millions of maize fields, but also moving on to other crops, especially sorghum and millets, into drier areas. As I mentioned, just recently, in the last few months, it's been confirmed in both India and Yemen, and it's fairly likely to continue its spread. Um, eastward, uh, northward, it's even quite probable that it'll reach here in Europe. So, one of the tools that we've developed to respond to this is a monitoring and early warning system which will allow the consistent collection of data, and I won't go into detail because Keith will present this in great detail, but the point that I want to make on this slide is that we will provi we're providing information, material, via a platform which is usable at many levels, from a global level to identify where resources should most be devoted at an international level, at a donor's level, down to a farmer's level where in the future, we'll have enough detailed information from FAMIS to be able to understand the biology, the ecology, the movement, the possible migration of this pest in its new range to help farmers make good decisions how to manage it, especially early, so you can make decisions about how to prevent uh, the damage and how to respond very quickly. So at this point, I will turn it over to Keith Cressman, who is the Senior Agriculture Officer uh, and the technical lead for this area of work. Keith? Okay, thank you very much, Alan. Let me just spend the next few minutes trying to go into more details on FAMIS. Uh, FAMIS consists of two components. There's a mobile app, which is uh, used in the field to collect data, and there's a global platform that's used then to analyze, summarize, and map all of that data. So let's first take a look at the mobile app. This is an app that's been developed inside here at FAO by the IT Solutions Group, uh, and it runs on an Android smartphone, usually version six or higher. And the purpose of the app is to collect and share scouting and trap data. So this is all the field data. So this is a tool that is to be used in the field. Now, why would we want to create an app and try to get it to be used in the field? Basically, we want uh, to monitor fall armyworm operationally, day in and day out. We'd like to know where is fall armyworm, and we'd like to monitor its spread. And it's not only FAO or countries, but it's also farmers, districts, communities, 
uh, extension agents, NGOs. This is a new pest in Africa, as Alan mentioned, so we don't know a lot about it. We'd like to try to understand much more its behavior uh, in terms of its relationship to the ecosystem, in terms of ecology, in terms of climate change and all of these. So we need data for that. So this is another person, another reason why to have an app um, for uh, collecting data. And obviously decisions have to be made on its management. And so it's much better, of course, to take those decisions based on data rather than just off the top of a... Uh, your, your cuff. So the app is meant for farmers, for communities, for extension workers, NGOs, researchers, other people. It's very intuitive, very simple to use. I'll show you in a minute. But when should the app be used? Essentially every time a field is checked for fall armyworm. In other words, when they're scouting and the plants are inspected for presence or absence of fall armyworm, or when pheromone traps are checked for moth counts. Should be used during the cropping season, obviously. So mainly in maize, but as Alan has mentioned, it's also in other crops, so uh, it can be used in any crop in any country. The app is available in 13 languages at the moment. It can be easily translated into other local <coughs> languages to increase its uptake and its uh, usability. The app was first released in March of this year, and the first version has three main components. Uh, it has information about the farm uh, that is collected, information when uh, it is used to, to scout plants, check those plants for fall armyworm, and again, when traps are checked. So this has forced us, in fact, to develop some standard protocols. Standard protocols on how to uh, inspect fields, how to check plants for fall armyworm, and how to check pheromone traps. And those are here in the guidance notes. So these guidance notes work hand in hand with the app to ensure that the data is standardized and collected in a, in a harmonious manner. So if we go in a little bit more detail on the app, it's very simple, very intuitive. As I mentioned, there's three sections. So in the first section of the farm information, there's three uh, screens of information. Um, basically, this is location information of where the farm is. It's GPS uh, geolocated, so using the GPS in the Android phone, so we can uh, use all this information in the GIS. Uh, then there's uh, some questions on training, um, what training has uh, the, the farmer or the user received, and then information about the farm itself. What's the main crop? When was it planted? What is the stage? Uh, if there's irrigation, if there's fertilizer, what's the general health of the crop, um, uh, the cropping system, uh, a little bit on the size of the farm, and lastly, any information on recent rainfall. So that's all kind of the, the first general information of the app. Then if the app is used when inspecting plants, then there's uh, a section on scouting. And here it's very simple. There's two uh, screens on that where it allows the entry of uh, the number of plants that have been checked and those that may have fall armyworm. Also, African armyworm and stem borer, because these are three major pests of, of maize. So that information can be entered as well. Information on the presence of natural enemies, because this is going to be a very important role in the future management of fall armyworm. Um, and other information um, concerning uh, the presence or absence of dead larvae some damage information, and lastly, any information on control. And control is very in, uh, important here because it's not only chemical control, but there's biological control. There's many traditional control practices that we'd like to capture from the app to better understand how um, it can be managed. And lastly, uh, the section on pheromone traps. So if these traps, there's some traps down here on the, on the bottom of the floor, when they're checked, uh, obviously that data needs to be entered into the app. Um, the number of moths that the trap is caught that are for sure fall armyworm, others that might be suspected to be fall armyworm, and others that are not fall armyworm. And a little bit of kind of household data on the trap itself, what type it is, when was it last changed, what's the condition, what type of pheromone lures are being used um, to attract the male moths. So that's it. It's very, very simple on um, the app. 
There's uh, no need for typing. It's all selection from menu items, drop down menus. Um, and it probably takes about maybe 10 minutes to complete in the field. Okay, so then the question is fine, that's nice. We have a, an app, it's collected data, what do you do with that? So obviously there's a flow of information that goes from the field up to a centralized uh, database, to a server uh, that allows then the mapping, the analytics, the display of that data. Prior to that, it goes through a uh, validation check at the national level. So countries are responsible for checking, ensuring the high quality of that data. And then once that has been done, it's available on the global platform to anyone. So it's not a, it's not a proprietary system, it's meant to be shared with all of the various stakeholders. So that's the farmers and the communities themselves who are collecting the data, but also other people within the country, decision makers, FAO, researchers, donors, NGOs, and so forth and so on. So here you can see uh, very um, quickly an example of the platform. There's statistics, there's data there, there's maps of where the fall armyworm is. It can be drilled down, you can zoom in on the map level down to the farm level. So you can actually see the crop where the, the scouting has taken place, or you can see where that pheromone trap is placed. And that's very important to make sure that the, the data is high quality, it's not just being collected in an office or in a building or downtown in a city somewhere. But we're not done. This is only the first version of the app. We have a second version that's um, in progress and being developed by, by um, CIO IT Solutions here at headquarters. And we want to improve the functionality of the app. We want to make it more useful for the user, more beneficial for the user. So this means we want to build into the app education and training. So the app should be self-training. We don't need to cons constantly have expensive workshops to teach people. It should be intuitive enough that they can learn themselves. It should provide education about the fall army worm. What is the pest? What can be done? Uh, management options, how to control it, how to monitor it. There is a, a, a plugin because this app has been developed with a plugin architecture. There's a plugin that uh, is called a scouting assistant that simply walks the, the person through the field, helping them to, to check each of the, the plants. So saying, are you at the first plant? Did you check it? Did, now go to the second plant. Did you check it? And so on and so forth. So this is uh, through graphics and through, through narration. There's also a new uh, bit of technology uh, based on artificial intelligence, ma machine learning, uh, that helps detect fall armyworm on a plant. So that we know uh, when the person is inspecting the plant that that damage or the presence of the insect is actual fall armyworm and not something else. So this is very state-of-the-art kind of cutting-edge technology that's been developed for FAO by Penn State University in the U.S and essentially allows your mobile phone, you just point it at the plant, and then it detects um, the percent of the plant that has been damaged by fall armyworm. So we get very high quality data here. And then lastly, as I mentioned, some management options presented in a very easy way for, uh, for farmers to uh, have uh, abilities and different, uh, different choices in terms of managing um, their crop. So all of this is going to be built into the, into the second version, which should be ready by the uh, end of this year. So that brings me then to the end of our quick talk. What's the next steps? So obviously the tools have been developed. Training courses have been uh, provided to countries. Um, smartphones and pheromone traps are in, in progress of being procured and distributed throughout um, Africa. But that's not enough. Now we need to really upscale the app. We need to get everybody to use it. The more people that use the app, the more data will be available, the better idea everybody will have where the fall army worm is and how it is spreading. And that leads to much better decision making and much more effective management of this pest. So there's three things that have to be done at the moment. Official adoption of the app at the national level, national buy-in. And this is at a high level, not just in the plant protection department of a country, but at the ministerial level. Ministers, in fact, 
We're, we're trying to engage directly with ministers to officially endorse the famous app so that it will be used in their country for their benefit. More smartphones have to be procured. Not everyone has a smartphone. So these are low-cost smartphones that can be bought on the local market that cost less than $100. They need to be procured. Pheromone traps as well. Traps uh, have to be placed in the field uh, every cropping season. The lure needs to be changed every uh, four weeks. So these things need to be, to be um, procured as well. And of course, all of this has to come together with training. So people have to know how to use these tools, the app, pheromone traps, how to scout a field, how to check the data. So it's strengthening national capacities. And this is an ongoing effort of FAO at all of our levels, within the country, within the um, sub-region, within the region, and from headquarters itself. So with that, I think I'll stop so we have some time for, for questions and answers. Thank you very much.